Dear friends in Christ, happy Sunday and welcome to the 26th Sunday in the Ordinary Time, ESC. It's also the fourth Sunday in the season of creation and the cries of the poor and the cries of the earth stare us in the face. It is time to do something very fast about the health and well-being of our common home. Just a few days ago, at the UN, the Secretary General Antonio Guterres raised an alarm and I quote, There is another battle we must end, a suicidal war against nature. The climate crisis is a defining issue of our time. It must be the first priority of every government and multilateral organization. And yet, climate action is being put on the back burner despite overwhelming public support around the world. Global greenhouse gas emissions need to be slashed by 45% by 2030 to have any hope of reaching net zero emissions by 2050. And yet, emissions are going up at record levels. On course to a 14% increase this decade, we have a rendezvous with climate disaster. I recently saw it with my own eyes in Pakistan, where one third of the country is submerged by a monsoon on steroids. We see it everywhere. Planet Earth is a victim of scorched Earth policies. Today's gospel is taken from Luke chapter 16, verses 10 to 31. In it, the rich man had everything going well for him in his lifetime. He obviously had much money as he was clothed in purple, usually associated with kings and emperors. His lavish and expensive lifestyle was not once in a while, but daily. On the contrary, at his gate was a poor man whose situation was compounded by illness that has left his whole body with sores and with no strength to earn a living. His food was more of desire than real. Even while alive, dogs were feasting on his sores. Did the rich man notice Lazarus? Obviously, from the latter part of the story, he knew him. At death, Lazarus did not have an expensive funeral. It was possible the dogs simply completed what they began while he was alive. All the town council officials came for the evacuation and disposition of the body in a mass grave, a shallow grave, or simply threw it into the sea to feed other creatures. He was carried, however, by angels to Abraham's bosom. When the rich man died, however, he most likely had a funeral befitting his status. Most likely expensive caskets, new hearse, laid in state for orations and great speeches, and had a funeral procession and march that is one of its kind. He arrived at a befitting city, Hades. The rich man in his torment recognized Abraham and Lazarus, the man who was in charge of so much in his lifetime now has a reversed role. He begged Abraham for help, a help that will come to him through Lazarus. Isn't that incredible? There is no suggestion from the passage that the reversal of roles is normal, but a lesson that if one fails to be generous to others in a lifetime, the possibility of a punishment is clear. In this story, we find just one Lazarus and one rich man. But in our nation today, we have plenty of Lazarus. A good percentage of the population live in poverty, material poverty. The rich man recognized Lazarus. He begged for water, and when that was not granted, he wanted Lazarus to go back to the world, to the same village to warn his five brothers. Someday, 
riches and wealth, opportunities and privileges will fail. Are you like the steward? In last week's gospel, planning for that time, who is the Lazarus around you today that you fail to notice, that you overlook, people that you have contributed to their wretchedness and poverty? Think of your house help, junior workers, your students, your modern slaves and casual workers in our factories and offices. Even think about those of your household, your aged parents. How can you help change this situation? When some people become rich, they go into seclusion. They exile themselves from their neighbors and friends. They build high walls in the name of security, employ guards and escorts, and control to the minimum those who can have access to them. This self-imposed exile is what is confirmed at the final judgment by the Lord who had warned whatsoever you do to the least of my brethren that you do to me. In other words, if you exiled yourself from your people, you already exiled yourself from God. May the Lord bless you this day and grant you a generous heart. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.